So I would bet as a business owner, chief marketing officer, executive, you wear a lot of hats. Every single day you're flipping on the, the cap for accounting, for HR, for marketing, you name it, you probably do it. And social media marketing is just one more checkbox in that long to-do list that you have sitting on your plate. And I'm sure you often ask, why am I doing this? Is there really a benefit or value to the time I'm spending to write these posts, to get everything out there and to, and to put it out on social media? Well, the short answer is yes, but that's what we're gonna talk about today. Welcome to Down in Digi, where we're getting down to the business of digital marketing. I'm your host, Karina Keys. Thanks for joining us today. So today, it's the third in our series on social media marketing, where we really want to help you determine the overall value and the impact of your investment into social networks. And while we want to make sure that you know that 90% of all people on the internet have access to and utilize a social network on a daily basis, they're not all just sitting there waiting for you to sell them something or to post you, or to do a sponsored ad or to talk about your product. You're going to be more successful by being social, by being you, by being authentic to your brand, by having a tone that engages with your buyers. And so when we talk about determining the overall value of your social media, those are just some things that come into play. And you're probably thinking, well, how am I going to give value and sell something if I'm not talking about a product or a brand that seems counterintuitive? But again, these are social networks. People are going to social networks to be social. They're not waiting for you to sell them a product or to push an ad or to even shop for new products. They're really going there to make a connection, both with you, with your team, with your brand and with others. So when you utilize that in the way that it's intended to be utilized, there's a lot of value that it brings back to your organization and your company. And you'll realize that value over time and over the course of your marketing efforts. So we want to talk a little bit about how to determine that value and not just why it's important because we've covered that the last couple of weeks. So when you talk about determining the value of your social media, there's some basic underlining values. Like it increases your visibility. It makes you more visible to not only your existing customers, but also to, to potential customers and people that maybe are not aware of your company, your services, or your product yet. It also, by default, is gonna increase traffic to your website because you wanna have them linked and one will go to another. So when you start talking about your products, we wanna have links, we wanna drive people to where there's additional information that's easily searchable. It's an accessibility feature. Some people would rather just go to your social media and message you, connect with you, tweet you, get a hold of you in one way or another. In fact, I know for my cable provider, if I have a question on customer service, I can always get an answer to a direct message in Twitter 10 times faster than picking up the phone and calling them. Guaranteed, every single time. They always solve my problem in minutes versus hours on hold. Try it sometime, you'll, you'll thank me later. Um, it also helps you stay up with what's happening within the industry. You can check and follow your competitors, maybe industry associations, and in different um, like thought leaders that help keep you abreast of what's happening within your industry, within your customers, and within their journey, and maybe how they're looking for or seeking information. And finally, that gives you a, a little bit of a competitor insight, but not just by following your competitors and seeing what they're talking about, but within the back end of, for example, Facebook analytics, you can really dig in and follow certain competitors and it tells you how many times they're posting, what they're posting on and what their engagement rates are. So it gives us a little bit of insight and background into those areas. Finally, we want to help determine the actual value. How do you know, like, what is my return on ad spend? And I'm going to direct you a little bit back to episode eight, where we really want to understand the value of our customer. But to get to that point, there's a few key pieces of information that we need to gather before we can start doing our calculations. 
One is we need to determine what the objective is for your social media marketing. If you ask yourself, if this happens, or what needs to happen over the next six months for me to be happy with our social media efforts? That's a really critical question. Once you have the answer to that, then we need to set goals based around those objectives. So for example, if your objective is to grow your email database by 20 or 25 or 30% using social media marketing tactics, then your goal is going to be adding 100 or whatever that number is to get to that percentage goal, new people, new signups to your database. And that can be accomplished through e-newsletter signups, through promotions, giveaways. But once we know the objective, we can now set a really clear, specific goal that we will be able to measure and monitor in real time. Next, we wanna make sure we set up the metrics for measuring that. So if there's gonna be a form fill within the social network, if you're gonna use a landing page, however you're going to collect that information, start by making sure that that's what people can do when they land there. You don't wanna send them to a landing page and have a goal of signups, but not have a form on the landing page, right? Seems simple. It's an easy step to miss, I promise you. But you really wanna make sure that that form is there and accessible. And then you've got the, the processes in place to be able to measure and monitor that information in real time. So you don't get the end to the end of that six month window and say, well, we only grew by 15% and not 25%, so this was an utter failure. That's not necessarily the case. You wanna be able to monitor consistently throughout and in real time to make sure that you are moving towards that goal and that the efforts that you're putting into your marketing are really going to deliver and reach that. You can optimize, you can change, you can try different um, ad types, you can try different copy, different images, whatever it takes to reach that goal at the end. But if you don't have a goal set, you're never going to accomplish it. So once you identify your objectives, once you have your SMART goal in place, and then you have the pieces in place to measure and monitor in real time, manage those efforts to make sure that you're really getting and moving the needle in the direction you need to move it to. The same goals if you have a financial objective. If you have an objective for brand awareness, there's something out there that will allow you to measure the impact that you're making through your social media. Thanks for joining us today for Down in Digi. I hope you know more now than you did five minutes ago. I would love for you to ask me a question, to post a comment, or to tell me what you think about this episode series that we just did on social media marketing. And if you have a topic or a question that you would like us to talk about, let me know and we will definitely add it into the queue and cover that in one of our future episodes. Until next week, cheers.